you're, be, you're dealing basically with an elite group that is heavily oriented towards what is called pantheism, or the belief that nature is God. And as a consequence, they believe we need, must reduce the human population down to one million, two million maybe, but one million would be better, one billion, I mean, around the world, and total Earth. And, and uh, confine our living space to less than 50% of the land area uh, of the world so that nature has most of the rights of access and so forth to, to the environment. Tell us, what, what do you believe, Dr. Kaufman, can we do to stop this agenda that's taking place all around us? Well, becoming aware of it is the first step. Most of you maybe have never heard of the words Agenda 21 or never heard of the words sustainable development, but they have been around for a long, long time. In fact, uh, the Adirondack State Park in upstate New York, you probably don't much, I go into it a little bit in my book, but that really was so successful by Governor Nelson Rockefeller back in the early 1970s he basically created a system whereby the part, all land use decisions are made by a park agency that is totally independent of the people. The people are not, res it's not responsive to the people whatsoever. It's okay. the type of government that they want to establish over the entire world. It's really kind of what's happening in Europe at this particular point in time. The government does what it thinks is right, the people be damned. And at this particular point in time, that is at the heart of sustainable development, the heart of Agenda 21. Agenda 21, you can look it up on the Internet. In fact, if you look up on the Internet and Google it, look and see how many actual Google hits there are. There's overnight, there were over 17 million hits on Agenda 21, and the chances are that you may not have even heard of it before tonight because it has been deliberately kept extremely quiet here in the United States. As I mentioned before, President Clinton uh, brought it into the United States in 1992 through 1994, 95, and uh, through his Commission on, Sust on Sustainable Development, the actual model for it was given to the agencies in 1996 to 1998, and the agencies are now following Agenda 21 principles this is a 40-chapter uh, document that literally outlines the what people can do around the world, everything. Everything that you do on a daily basis would be under some sort of control by the government. And we have seen in a very dramatic way the last few years, and even into the Bush administration, uh, how the government is taking over more and more decision-making as to how you can use your land, you can farm, you can do forestry activities, or whatever the case might be. Uh, it's becoming more and more intrusive into our particular uh, supposedly free market society. Well, I don't know if you were connected on the line or not yet, Dr. Kaufman, but in the, in the beginning of the show, I was talking about a fellow down in Georgia who was si fined $5,000, and this was just a couple weeks ago, for unauthorized agricultural activity because he had a vegetable. Um, he was growing vegetables on his acreage, whether it had a couple acres, I believe, he had. Well, actually, then it's considering a bill today. It was just uh, voted out of closure today. Uh, the Senate um, 510, I think it is, the Food Safety Act, uh, basically would allow the federal government to determine who gets to grow, when they can grow it, how they grow it, and how uh, what kind of safety margins and so forth they have to use to ensure food safety. In well, other there'll words, be food safety because no one will get to eat it. That'll well, make it very safe true. if you can't consume it. You can't right. consume and your own fruit small. or vegetables that you grow in your backyard. Would be exactly just like what just happened for a person down in Georgia. You could be in violation if you're growing beans in your backyard, right? Even if they were not for sale, yeah, because you're violating this this uh, this particular act that's being considered by the Senate right now, and it looks like it's going to pass. Oh. Uh, it is horrifying to realize how these progressives. Uh, that are controlling the House and the Senate at this point. They're not going to be controlling it after January, but still there's a lot of progressives in the Republican Party, too, and they just, they cannot see any government program that doesn't really suit them very well, that really they see a need for because they're scared to death of having any risk whatsoever 
and I'm sorry, you walk outside and you take a risk that you're going to be hit by a falling tree or something. It's, it's not very high, of course, but you, life has risk in it, and you can get to the point of diminishing returns. Let me just give you an example. Most people, including most of you in the listening audience, are scared to death of pesticides in agriculture. I mean, you have been hammered on this in your public education. You've been hammered on it in your evening news and so forth that these pesticides are horrifying. Do you realize that the worst pesticide that's being used out there, I shouldn't say that because I'll be proven wrong, but most of the pesticides that are being used out there, especially the herbicides, have less toxicity and less um, uh, carcinogens than coffee. Yeah, I believe that. In fact, um, my friend works at a university in there, but they had uh, um, an exterminator in there, and he said, "Well, we can't. I can't remember what it is that they were had called him in to try to to, to eliminate or exterminate." And he said, "Well, we can't guarantee it anymore because the chemicals that they're allowed to use really aren't very effective. In fact, I'm sure that's why we have such a." Um, explosion of bed bugs throughout this country because we can't use anything that will kill them just like they won't allow the DDT in Africa so how many people, millions of people die down there needlessly because they won't allow them to use what they could yes. use to kill mosquitoes Look, malaria, it's estimated anywhere from 50 to 60 million people have died because of the DDT ban Right Right. Let me ask you a question. Um, you have a, a brand new way of protecting your local community from punitive federal and sometimes state regulations. What is that specifically that you refer to? <laughs> it is a per very, very powerful system. It's astonishing. I was just uh, talking to the, the group that uh, developed the system 20 years ago, and now I think it's almost close to 80 different governmental units around the country are using it. And what it does, if you if you look at your uh, various state laws and federal laws, what you find is that almost every single one of them says that the whatever agency that they're dealing with has to coordinate their planning activities with the local community. Uh, and it's been totally ignored. Nobody's ever paid any attention to it and so forth. The environmentalists have known that because they've used it to get in bed with a lot of the federal agencies especially, but some of the state agencies as well. And what is happening is now that communities are waking up and they're beginning to use this approach, it's called coordination. Okay. Where you can, a local community, it could be a school board, it could be a water board, a board, the city council, county commission, doesn't matter who, who it is as long as they're elected, they can petition, write a letter to the agency and say that they want to be a coordinating partner with the agency on this particular issue or could be several issues, doesn't matter. The fact is that the agency has to invite them into the process. Oh, okay. And you remember the the uh, NAFTA, Super NAFTA Highway that was going to be bisecting the country. Right. That was part of the so-called North American Union and so forth. The Trans-Texas Corridor. Pardon? The Trans-Texas Corridor. The Trans-Texas Corridor. $80 billion project. I had already laid the groundwork. The, e, uh, the EIS had been written. Uh, they were scheduled to break ground at the beginning of this year, and uh, it was going to be, I think, three-quarters of a mile wide up through the heart of Texas into Oklahoma. The first part of that segment, the actual uh, border entry would not be in, until you got to, I think, St. Louis, Missouri, and uh, it was a huge, huge project. And it was actually bid out by to a Spanish company called Centra, and everything was ready to go, and five small community, Texas communities, uh, were contacted.